the government's involvement in the BP crisis really unprecedented when you look at the history of American business, and this isn't even a U.S. company. Is this a war on capitalism? Fortune's managing editor Andy Sir, we're here to weigh in on all of it. You've got uh, a lot of insight on this one and some opinions as well, Andy. Is it a war on capitalism, what we're seeing? Well, I don't think it is a war on capitalism. I mean, I think capitalism, you could argue, has failed, or certain parts of capitalism, has failed our society. I mean, the, the criticism uh, against President Obama is that he has done this against BP. He has stepped in uh, on Wall Street, stepped in, and the insurance business mm -hmm. stepped in with the big autos in an unprecedented way. You know, oh, my gosh, what is the President of the United States doing, overstepping, sure. you know, his bounds? But on the other hand, you look at what these companies have done. I mean, almost destroyed our financial system. Uh, GM, you know, would have possibly gone out of business, destroying millions of jobs. AIG, you know, torpedo the financial system. And now BP fouling uh, the entire Gulf of Mexico. So, you know, I, I think that the president has seen unprecedented crises and he's responding in an unprecedented way. What do you think, Andy, this means on the broader term of American businesses operating in this political environment right now. As far as you know, the broader picture here, if big companies continue to do egregious things, I think this president has signaled very strongly that he has no qualms about responding in a very, very strong way, and CEOs take note. In the boardrooms uh, across America right now, and especially the rumblings on Wall Street, what are you hearing, especially given this situation, if you will? about how this will affect the way the businesses truly operate mm -hmm. going forward. Well, CEOs and uh, people on American boards, which is to say prominent business people, are not happy with President Obama. There's no question about that. Um, on the other hand, I, I asked them, well, then what would you do? What would you do with BP? Oh, well, you know, I think he's doing the right thing there. And then you take peace. But what would you do with AIG? Well, I guess we really did need to bail them out. Otherwise, it would have created the system. What would you have done with GM? And you ask them piece by piece, and they sort of agree. And then it's the totality of it that really ticks them off. But then when you ask them about the pieces, they end up agreeing with what he did. So, you know, they just don't like it on a sort of, um, an, in the sense of um, a strategy, but when you ask them in practical terms, they end up agreeing with you very often. Yeah, finally, the, the congressional hearing that Tony Hayward uh, you know, was front and center at uh, this week, uh, right. it, it, it was fascinating to watch lawmakers go at him. It was also equally fascinating to hear a lot of the non-answers that were given. Yeah, absolutely. And, he, you know, that's what you do. You have to stonewall. Of course, he said he wasn't stonewalling. I mean, but this is the, the great tradition of going in front of Congress. Is you, you, you know, I, I found it actually particularly distasteful when he said, I had no idea. I'm not in charge of that. I mean, the CEO's always in charge. It's always his responsibility or her responsibility to know. And you have to say, you know, I screwed up. And I don't feel that he really screwed up enough. I mean, and it was very interesting to me. I mean, the guy had no friends at all besides perhaps Representative Barton. I mean, at least when Goldman Sachs is up there, you know, there are some constituencies who, you know, might be supportive. When you, you know, come to a big foreign oil company that's messing up our beaches, you have very few friends in the U.S. Congress.